Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing and doing a quick setup and features review of the brand new iRobot Roomba i7 Plus, the first truly automated robot vacuum that even goes so far as to empty itself. Now, before we get into this video, be sure to drop it a huge thumbs up because I am thinking about hosting a brand new iPhone XS giveaway soon. So be sure to stick around toward the end of the video for information on that. Now, I also wanted to stress that I'm mostly just going to be focused on the features and setup review aspect in today's video. I will be putting out a more in-depth review once I've had a chance to fully live with this product for a week or two, because of course it is brand new. So let's get straight into this video. Starting with the very massive box, as you guys can tell, this thing is just a total behemoth. On all sides, it basically just features pictures of the robot as well as the clean base that will actually empty the bin of the robot into the stand itself. It's fascinating. I'm going to go more into depth on that subject throughout the duration of this video. And getting a close up of the corner, it just states that it comes with the Roomba i7 robot vacuum, the clean base charging station, plus automatic dirt disposal, as well as a line cord for that, two dirt bags one dual mode virtual wall barrier, two AA batteries for that, as well as an extra filter and an extra edge sweeping brush. And I also wanted to touch on the fact that there's really no difference between the i7 Plus and the i7, except for the fact that the Plus denotes it comes with the clean base. You can just buy this as a robot vacuum itself without the clean base. However, it will not include the bin that is compatible with the clean base, which is able to be purchased separately as a bundle so it raises the cost about 50 bucks because of course you do have to essentially have two bins with the product so it makes more sense to buy the two together now let's get into opening this thing up and delving into all of its awesome features now because of how absolutely massive this box is we're going to have to do an unboxing on the floor so I've brought this guy down here and I've taken the liberty of already pulling those two cardboard flaps out and we can just lift the lid up to reveal three separate segments inside the box. Now, toward the top is actually what takes up the most room in this box. That is the clean base itself. And then we have the accessories in the middle and the actual robot at the bottom. I'm just going to pull these out and set them on the counter. All right, now that I have everything set up on the counter, I'm just going to, first of all, take the plastic wrap protecting this clean base off of it. This thing looks incredible. So starting at the bottom, we have a few things going on. We have where the wheels will actually come up onto, as well as the port that connects to the robot and will actually empty the bin contents into this stand. Next, we have the two charging contacts and right above that, we have the window that will send out the signal that the bot will see and use to actually dock itself automatically. And moving up, we have this long rectangle that's attached to it. This is definitely not your traditional charging station that all other iRobot products have featured in the past. So there's actually a very strong seal around this top right here that will prevent anything from escaping this area as it's sucking and pulling the dirt up and into the bag. And let me talk about that really quick, why there is even a bag to begin with as I'm opening this and showing you guys how it works. So there's a bag and this full rubber seal around this top bin area because it's much, much much more hygienic than having a bagless system. Essentially, it's for sanitary purposes and it's ideal for people who have allergies or who don't like dealing with dust or debris when emptying. And you don't even have to worry about that at all because as you pull the bag out of the top bin, it automatically seals the port that it uses to put things into the bag. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the handle that you use to pull it out like I just did closes this right here, which is the actual port that fills up the bag. So as you pull it up and out, it locks off the dirt and debris inside of the bag and you can just toss that in your trash like so. And reloading a new bag couldn't be any easier. You just drop it down inside of the slot 
and you're good to go. It's really just that easy. All right, so moving to the smallest of the three segments inside the larger box, we're going to talk about the accessories box first, simply because I want to go more into depth on some of the features of the robot that we'll talk about toward the end. All right, and working our way from left to right, we have a second bag here. And I also wanted to quickly mention that right here, there is a rubber seal around the port of the bag or the intake of the bag. And this is to ensure again that nothing escapes during the process of pulling the contents from the robot to the clean base. I can't explain how awesome it is to have everything in a fully automated and closed unit. What I mean by that is from the time the robot actually leaves to start its clean job to when it's being emptied to when you actually have to trash the bag inside of the clean base, you don't have to come in contact with dirt at all. That's fantastic and it's fully revolutionary for the automated or robot vacuum industry. And also each bag will hold the contents of 30 full bins from the robot. After that point, you will have to purchase replacements once you've gone through two bags and the replacement cost for a set of three is $14.99, so not bad at all. That will essentially cover 90 total bins from your robot. Now next, we have the filter, which captures 99% of mold, pollen, dust mites, and pet allergens. So significant improvements over its predecessor in the filter department. What's really interesting is that this filter is actually smaller than the filter, found in the 900 series, but it does a better job, and that's because it is more dense and compact versus a more spread out filter in the 980. Now next, we have the backup brush right here at the bottom. That's all that's in this. It's just to ensure that these brushes or the bristles on the brush do not bend, which I'm inadvertently doing right now. And we also have the virtual wall barrier, which does come in two different modes or does support two different modes, rather a direct line of sight. So this is really cool. If for instance, you have a fireplace that you don't want the robot venturing into, what you do is after you plug in the AA batteries, you would set it to the straight line of sight one, and it essentially creates a virtual wall or a virtual barrier hence the name, that the robot cannot pass through. So it's like a boundary of sorts. And then we have a halo mode, which is the second option. And what that'll do is it's fantastic for actually blocking off things within a two foot radius around the virtual wall barrier. So things like dog dishes, for instance, as you can see, right here on the sticker that they've included. They have a couple examples there of different use cases. Then we have two AA batteries, as well as the cord used to connect the clean base to your wall outlet. All right, guys, now let's move on to the primary star of this video, the iRobot i7 Plus. Now lifting up the cardboard flap reveals the iRobot i7 unit sitting directly on top and it looks very streamlined and improved over the 980. As you can see, looks absolutely fantastic. We're gonna get some close-ups of this in just a second, but below that we do have some literature. So we have a quick start guide of sorts that tells you to download the iRobot app from the app store and also to connect the clean base to the wall and to put the robot on the charging contacts we talked about previously. Now, below that, we have our owner's guide for both the robot as well as the clean base itself. And we have some warranty information. All right, so setting all of this off to the side, Let's return to, again, the star of today's video. So I have it pointed this way to highlight a few interesting things. First of all, you'll notice we actually do have a camera right there, very similar to the 980, as well as some of iRobot's other vacuums. However, what's notably different is that this camera is actually smaller and much lower profile while being significantly better and offering what iRobot dubs their iAdapt 3.0 technology with vSLAM, which is their patented technology that helps this robot navigate around through rooms. And you might be wondering, well, why does it actually have vSLAM and a camera? That's a great question. 
What's really interesting is that it doesn't fully rely on the camera itself and it also doesn't upload images or anything like that. Essentially what it's doing with the camera is looking for different contrast points on the wall or with furniture between light and dark and how light reflects. And the i7, more so than the 900 series, is looking for a few unique contrast points on your wall and throughout your house and it remembers the distance between those points and where those unique points are with inside a room to generate a map so it knows where it's going and it knows where it's been. It essentially creates an entire floor plan of your home after a few jobs and you can even go so far as to name the rooms and tell it which rooms you want to vacuum and when. You can set it up on an automated cleaning schedule to, for instance, on Mondays and Wednesdays vacuum your living room and your office, where on Tuesdays and Thursdays you want it to vacuum the rest of the house or other smaller rooms. So some absolutely fantastic and very in-depth stuff, and iRobot does a fantastic job of delivering that in a very seamless and user-friendly way through their application that I've had a chance to test out already. Now, quickly expounding upon the Smart Maps feature, as I said, it will take about two or three jobs of the whole space, and it'll start to show a progress report of the floor plan. Once it's complete, software will suggest where the boundaries of the rooms are, and it does a pretty good job of being accurate, though you can adjust them as you see fit. Now, it doesn't suggest names, but you can personalize and customize different room names as well, which is also something that's super cool. So long story short, it uses the camera to know where it's going, to know where it's been, and to also slow down before it thinks it's going to impact something. And then it uses vSLAM to ensure that, yep, that is in fact a wall or something that obstructs my movement. Now, flipping it over or turning it around, you'll notice that we do have three buttons on the robot unit itself. We have a clean button in the middle. On the left, we have a dock button. And to the right of that, we have a spot clean button. And you'll notice here that the ring around the clean button is actually lighting up. That's because all of the buttons are actually touch sensitive now. They're not like toggleable, so they don't physically click in. It's something cool that iRobot has done to help modernize the unit. All right, so all around this robot, you'll notice that we have these little areas right here that are essentially cliff sensors and cliff detectors. And iRobot has informed me that these function better on darker carpets and darker surfaces. So if it is vacuuming and there is a ledge, it will not fall off just like all of its predecessors. But this one does feature an improvement in that category, specifically where dark surfaces are concerned. And on either side, we do have these two spring-loaded wheels that will allow the robot to function at different heights. So if you have something like a rug that it needs to transition on with a high pile, then it will be able to do so easily and seamlessly. And above that, we do have the edge brush right here, which essentially just sweeps things towards these rollers. And at the top, we have a wheel that spins 360 degrees to allow the robot to navigate. On either side of that, we have the charging point contacts, which do look improved over some of the past models. They do look bigger and like they have a bigger surface area overall. Now, these rollers, are very similar to the 980. They're easier to take out though. And the one at the top, so the front roller fletches are revised. So these little plastic grooves, they're a bit longer to help it pick up larger debris as well. And putting them back in is very simple. In fact, they even include pictures of which roller goes where that are color coordinated. And on either end, they actually have unique shapes. So they will not go into the wrong slot. So I'm just going to replace these now quickly. You can do so by just pushing it up against the side and kind of rolling it around a little bit until it just starts to drop in. You can see how easy it was to do the first one there, and it's very easy to do, but I just got caught up because of course I'm having to do this through the viewfinder of my camera here. But below that, we have a fully revised bin. And what's really cool about this is you can see right here, it says automatic dirt disposal. And I'm just so excited for this, guys. I can't even stress that enough. And this is how it's going to pull the contents from the bin into the clean base. And to actually pull this bin out, it's a little bit different now. 
So you can see we have a button right here that starts to push the bin a little bit off to the side and you just pull it out like that. So you basically just push and pull out like so. And getting a close up of the bin, you can see that this is where the filter is now. So you never actually have to touch any of the debris inside of it. In fact, you can even wash this bin now because the new and improved motor has been moved from the bin to the robot itself, which results in not only a quieter robot during operation, but a more sanitary way to clean your bin without actually having to interact with any of the contents. You can just pull the filter out, you just pinch both sides and pull, and then you can wash this thing. So you open this just by pushing this button right here, as indicated by the trash bin icon, and then you can just run this under your sink and you can wash it out, let it dry, pop your filter back in, and then put the bin back inside of the robot and let it go on to do its thing. So some very cool technology, very awesome improvements and changes on iRobot's part, and it just overall offers a much more sanitary process. This is how, in my opinion, all robot vacuums should be. If you get a robot vacuum, the entire point is because you don't wanna have to deal with A, the actual task of vacuuming, and B, the disposal of that dirt, pet hair, everything disgusting that you're of course vacuuming up. Now let's go ahead and put this bin back inside and you'll notice here that this actually does have a curve on it and it has to catch inside of the robot so you can't just force it in like so, it will not fit. You have to hook it and catch it like that and then push it in. It's very easy to do but it is a little difficult on camera here. Now that's basically everything with the robot, some massive improvements. I also wanted to talk about internal upgrades from a CPU perspective, so central processing unit. This thing has much more processing power and memory now. In fact, it has a smartphone level CPU and iRobot will be able to do a lot of cool things with this guy in the future. Similar to how when the 980 launched, it didn't actually have the maps it generated of your house at all. Now this thing not only has maps, but you can dynamically tell it which rooms you want to vacuum. So expect very similar big updates and new features to come for this guy in the future because it is of course a connected product. It runs on a firmware just like your phone, iPad, or computer, and it will be upgradable in the future as well. All right, so there we go. The clean base is connected and the robot is on it. By the way, that was a very, very simple process to actually get it charging. All I had to do was just place it on. I didn't even really have to line it up. And you can see that the light is glowing, indicating that it is receiving a charge. And we also have the status indicator on the base as well. All right, so with the app open, I'm just going to tap the three lines. If this is your first time setting up an iRobot product, you should see a screen similar to this. I'm going to tap Get Started, followed by Continue to the Home Placement, and I'm going to name this guy Bender 3.0 because this is the third generation, or at least for me, this is the third successor to my original robot. And I'm going to tap Continue to connect it to my Wi-Fi network and I'm going to input my password. All right, so the password is in, and now it's asking us to activate the robot by pressing the two buttons on either side of clean. So let's do that now. And you can hear that a tone did go off and we did receive a blue ring around clean once we did it successfully. And now we can just tap inside of the app. I press the buttons and continue. Here we go. It has located the i7 and tapping on it, it's just connecting to our Wi-Fi network now. And there we go, it's checking for software updates, it's on the latest firmware, setup is complete and we get that awesome animation. We can tap continue. We have some noises going on there. Okay, and now it's just walking us through what we can do inside of the app. I'm going to tap on done right there, and I'm going to show you guys this awesome demo. We are going to get to do it. I'm going to tap on empty bin.
All right, that was so loud. I'm gonna have to turn that down in post, but let me explain to you guys what it's like in person. So it's basically just like a very high powered vacuum running for about 15 seconds. Essentially, it's another vacuum inside of an upright stand that will pull the dirt out of the bin from the robot vacuum into the bag. So it's really cool and some awesome technology. And for a final quick look at the rest of the app, before we conclude this video, we do have some preferences at the bottom. So we can change some things here. We can set it to do automatic for cleaning pass. It essentially says that Roomba intelligently chooses to use two or more passes for a single small room, one pass if cleaning larger spaces. So that's pretty cool. It ensures that your smaller rooms get as clean as possible and and it does it all while managing battery life and efficiency. And then going back here, at the bottom we have history, and of course it hasn't cleaned anything yet, but you'll be able to see how much area it's cleaned over its entire lifespan. We also have scheduling, so you can set up schedules for specific days, and again, you can set it once it has created those smart maps to do very specific rooms at certain times on certain days of the week. You can see it says pick a room or every room. It gets smarter as it learns your home, determining the best way to clean each and every room. And then we also have more at the bottom, which allows us to change the name, see information about the firmware, serial number, when we set it up, factory reset, things like that. All right guys, so that concludes this very first initial review and unboxing setup of the brand new iRobot i7 Plus with CleanBase. If you're interested in a potential iPhone 10s giveaway, again, be sure to rate this video up, leave a comment down below in the comment section letting me know why, and I might host the giveaway soon. I'm actually working with a service that we're trying to get launched and off the ground. If we can make that happen, then in turn the giveaway will happen. So be sure to stay tuned for more information on that. Subscribe if you have yet to. More coverage on the i7 Plus coming soon. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.